So I woke up this morning to check the daily newspaper, AKA Twitter, and found Dwayne Haskins trending on Twitter, the, the, the official trending tab. Essentially, he got benched and he will no longer be the starting quarterback for the Washington football team. It's amazing how you can spend over 10 years of your life trying to get into a certain league, the NFL, NBA, and it can be cut short in the span of one to two years. This is only his second year in the league and they're already losing faith in him. And this led me to find out his contract details, his NFL contract details. And according to Sports Rack, Dwayne Haskins signed a four year, $14 million contract with the Washington Redskins, AKA the Washington football team, including an $8.5 million signing bonus. Essentially, his $14 million contract is guaranteed for those four years with a team option to extend the contract for the fifth year. Essentially, throughout his contract, aside from the $8 million bonus, signing bonus that he gets up front, he is going to be making, or he's co continuously making $3.6 million per year. And this led me to GQ Sports because I recall seeing him on their platform. And this is what we're about to detail now, how he spent his first million. Whose money is this? I just got here, this is not mine. <laughs> What's up, GQ? It's Wayne Haskins. And this is how I spent my first minute. I never really had a job growing up. I might've worked like some football camps, so that counts as like a, like a summer camp or something like that, but I never like had to work a clock day, nine to five, none of that. So if we look at your resume, first job ever is NFL quarterback. That's pretty cool, right? <laughs> yeah, that'll be my first, first real job. When I got drafted, I was actually at home at a bowling alley in Maryland, and I went to high school in the area. My owner's son actually goes to my high school, so it's crazy. I used to go to wrestling games growing up, just to be able to be drafted by the hometown team, and you know, knowing I'd be able to take care of myself and not have to worry about making ends meet. Being in school, I didn't have any debt, so everything was already paid for in my apartment. Um, all I think I had to pay for in college was my car bill. I might have had like maybe a couple of bills for like the library, but I didn't pay that off. <laughs> Over two bucks. Yeah, that's about it. Oh, the first thing. Just a quick note on the whole debt thing. Um, one thing I've realized myself, based on my experience with being in college and university, well, university, I should say University of Ottawa, shout out to the GGs. Throughout your college years, people aren't saving money cumulatively to pay for college. I know obviously college, university is already expensive as it is, but throughout every first year, second year, third year, fourth year, you should be having a certain, you should be setting aside money, all your deposits, whatever you can afford to do. Just put it in there so that by the time you graduate, it's not like you have no savings. It's not like you have nothing saved up to pay that debt, right? Com compare having a $50,000 debt and maybe you have at least maybe 5,000 or 10,000 perhaps in savings that you know you can kind of work with. Like I'm sure you can save 10,000 over the course of four years, right? Like as opposed to just graduating and then you are looking for, for, for income, but also have no savings. Right, that's like the worst case scenario. Right. Shit is hard. Hey, bro, come on now, dog. Come on, man. <laughs> like, bro. You know, already that it costs a lot just to live, right? Have an apartment, food, stuff like that. But have it, have it in mind. If you're already in college, grad school, whatever it is, ten percent, maybe even five percent, is dedicated towards ultimately paying back those student loans. I asked my agent, like, I'm drafted now, so when do I get paid? When I got my first signing bonus, I put about 70% of it away, 30% of it, I put it in a different account, and I bought some stuff as well, so we'll get into that too. <laughs> so before we talk about my first million, it's very important that you save your money. And now that I made the money, my like, brother's taxes. So, like, I'm thinking I'm getting all this money, and, like, half of it's going to taxes. You got agent fees, you got all this stuff you got to pay for. And I'm a financial advisor, so talk about finances, um, savings, having different buckets, he calls it, as far as having spending money, having saving money, having money put away for the long term with, like, three different bank accounts. Make sure you be smart with your money because at the end of the day, you don't make that money every day the rest of your life. And taxes are no joke, man. Once you get into that like upper 200K per year range, damn near like 40% of your income is going towards taxes. And this is this is just a, the tip of the iceberg because there's one more tax that people do not pay attention to. I'm about to get into that in a bit. The first thing I bought after I saved my money is make sure you save your chicken. I got myself a car and my mama house. Save your chicken. Save your chicken. Shout out to Marshawn Lynch. Now, I done been on the other side of a retirement, and it's good when you get over there and you can do what the f you want to. So I tell y'all right now while y'all in it, take care of y'all bread. So when y'all done, you go ahead and take care of yourself. 
So while y'all at it right now, take care of y'all bodies. You know what I mean? Don't take care of y'all chicken. You feel me? Don't take care of y'all mentals. Because, look, we ain't lasting that long. Um, you know, I had a couple of players that I played with that, you know what I mean? They no longer here no more. They no longer. So, I mean, you feel me? Start taking care of y'all mentals, y'all bodies, and y'all chicken for when y'all, you know, ready to walk away. You walk away and you be able to do what you want to do. Shout out to Marshawn Lynch, man. Got myself a Bentley Bentiago. It's a very nice car. I got a custom matte black, red interior. It's my baby called the Batmobile. It's my favorite car. And you can see that car right here. And the tear right here. <laughs> that car, $250,000. <laughs> so, $250,000 car. Custom made, right? Custom made. Which would also make it harder to resell because. You, you, you ever seen those uh, Pet My Ride type of shows on uh, MTV back in the day? It's gonna be very hard to re well, obviously the car is still good, but it's gonna be harder to resell it in the case that you want to just, you don't want the car anymore. Door! Welcome oh, to the inside of your van. Man. Woo! You got your van. And I've never, I get it, I get it, I get it, I get it. But I've never understood the concept of buying a brand new car. Just, you know, maybe because I, I don't know, I'm a driver's license. <laughs> but I'm just saying, man, at least, is there really different, is there really that much of a difference between a car that, that is made in 2019 and maybe 2017? I'm just saying, he has the money for it, and he has saved, what, 70% of his, of his signing bonus, so for the most part, if he continues that approach, should be good. Question is, should you buy new and have the heavy depreciation in the beginning, but have very little repair cost, or buy a car that has had a lot of depreciation that's occurred and risk the repair cost? And the answer to that is what I call the sweet spot. And the sweet spot occurs at about the second year and goes till the eighth year and that would if you're putting on 12,000 miles a year that would be between 24,000 and 96,000 miles and this sweet spot is what I consider the best financial choice to own a car cars are built so well these days that the sweet spot is at 24,000 to 96,000 miles. So this scenario, you're going to get the best possibility of getting the car for the best price with the least amount of maintenance during your own. I'm not buying no more cars. Not a very great investment to buy cars. They depreciate with value. If you're gonna buy a car, make sure you're comfortable with what you buy. What was your mom's reaction like? And how did you give her the house? I guess it was like the mortgage papers. I like, she has to sign on it too, because of course she's living there. Being able to just, hey mom, I got a surprise for you. There's a house. <laughs> but she was just so excited and uh, being able to, you know, move to somewhere where she'd be comfortable and give me a really big hug and uh, definitely made those 14 plus years of hard work worth it. I always wanted to give my mom a house. That's like something a lot of athletes want to do for their mom. You know, my mom sacrificed a lot for me growing up and being able to, to take care of her is something that was really important for me. How much was the house that you bought? It's not enough on the table. That would be the rest of all this money. So seven fifty. My mom's house was seven fifty thousand, but that wasn't spent for me, so I'm not gonna count that. Okay, so Buys a mama house, so she's living in about a seven hundred fifty fifty thousand dollar house, right? And this is what I was talking about—the other tax that people don't take about, take, take into account. You have the income tax and then property tax. So for a seven hundred thousand dollar house, you're probably looking at maybe fifteen to twenty thousand dollar in terms of property tax, right? So think about it, right? You're elevating your lifestyle. You have a Bentley, maintenance of that car, house, yearly property tax, yearly and hopefully your income is still staying the same but you see already like the team's already giving up on him right he's not even the the, the backup to the backup well he's a third string quarterback now right he's not even it's not he's not starting and he's not even a backup he's like inactive come the next game they play against the uh la rams right so like things can fall apart pretty quickly especially if you have raised your lifestyle to a certain level <laughs> I always wanted to go out the country. I have not gone yet. Declaring from the draft, right from college, is training and then hopping right into the NFL season. There's like literally no time to go anywhere. And I'm going to the Bahamas soon. Trip coming up next month. 
I like to shop smart, so I got the flights in advance, so they weren't more than like $800, and then the hotel was like $3,000 for a couple days. So let's budget 10000 for the vacation? Yeah, like maybe like five or seven, around there. Finance guys watching, so I'm being smart stuff. 10 bands, vacation money. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. I can see that. Because, like, you know, as an NFL athlete, the stress of playing, what, four months, five months season, and then constantly having to deal with paparazzi, people pressure, all that shit. I don't, I don't even blame them. I don't blame them. It's kind of hard to put a number on vacation or the value of it, but always, just between you and I, just between you and I, okay? Whenever you're buying stuff, always ask yourself, is this thing making me, making me more money? Is this thing saving me money in the long run? Or is it just losing me money, right? Straight up, ask yourself those questions and, and then that will filter out uh, needless spending or a shopping addiction, quote unquote. Woo! I bought some jewelry. I got some more right now, shout out to Gabe. I always rock earrings. I didn't get my ears pierced until I was like a junior in high school. Me and my dad got ears pierced together actually, so it's pretty ironic. I got me one or two watches, something I got on right now. The Tech Philippe. I bought it bust down already. It's just like a chandelier. This watch is can be worth over 100,000. I did not pay that much for this watch though. I gotta pull up my receipts. It's say like 60K for the Patek. What about the chain? How much was the chain? <sighs> Another 10. Chain. Looks that looks like like the chain was a custom made like DH right so again the more custom made your your shit is the harder it is to resell it in the event that you know you see stories of NFL athletes selling their their uh, Super Bowl rings right so part of his settlement a judge forced the former forward to liquidate his assets which included selling his NBA championship ring for twenty one thousand five hundred dollars so like this is not anything new right the more custom made it is the more like personalized it is to you, the harder it is gonna be, it is to, to resell the uh, item, the product. You gotta be drippy, so I got a couple nice clothes. My dad always says I get my fashion sense from him. He used to model and all that stuff like that, so I always kind of knew how to dress and just didn't have the money to buy the expensive things. So of course, when I got to the league, I was training in LA, so Rodeo Drive is like one of those places you hear, like, met a whole bunch of fashion people out here. I mean, I got a personal shopper now, and I don't go to the mall anymore. So having somebody I can just text, and like, I wanna get this shirt, I saw this shirt here, being able to buy it for me. Uh, shout out to Joey Doves. I gotta buy suits. Suits was something I had to buy for the season, being a quarterback. Bought like four or five suits, tailor made, 10. If I had to say clothes or anything like that, first year, I'm like, I'm like 40,000. If I had- Okay, I walk with the suits. Arguably that could be a, a business tax write off, right? Because it's part of your presentation on camera, in the field, going to work, right? It's part of it. So that could, that could be a tax write off right there. But the clothes, bro, 80K on clothes? Was it 80K? Maybe because I'm a minimal, minimalist at heart. <laughs> literally, <laughs> I literally wear the same shit every day, bro. Literally, pretty much. It's like Tyler Hero. Tyler Hero spent someone's monthly rent on clothes. A weekend's in Miami. I love going to South Beach. I'm just looking to, for clothes, shopping. Uh, there's a place called Webster's. That's really nice. And then the design district has a lot of Dior and different type of stores like that. Clothing, 85,000. Hey, man. Hey. I had to take myself out of the best style for the Washington Redskins. We gave Landon, Landon Collins, he's up there. My man, Jimmy Moreland is up there. Steven Sims. Dunny, Q Dunny's up there. And Crow. And I mean, Rogers Camardi is like my top five for drip on the team. I got a funny story. So I'm training in LA. I'm working out with Deshaun Watson and a few other friends, like Deshaun Kaiser and Manny Wilkins, with my quarterback coach, Quincy Avery. And we're playing a game. And we're like, whoever loses has to buy dinner tonight. So unfortunately, I lose, right? We go to some restaurant and they run the tab up on me crazy. First of all, it was supposed to just be us four. They invited friends, family, cousins. It was like almost 15, 20 people at the table. I'm like, there's no way I'm paying for all this food. It was like almost $10,000. I was pissed. So I didn't bet with them no more. Oh. Okay, another thing happened. Ricky Dinner. They played my man, bro. How are you gonna let him do that? How are you gonna do him like that? You know he's a rookie. You know he may not get another contract. How are you gonna make... Watch your circle, man. Circle... I know they were doing it out of fun, and, like, he's a rookie, so they had to, like, give him some rookie teasements. But, like, bruh. 
See how money just goes by just like that? See how money just, just, just can't, just can't. Screen right there. Wow. Wow. Wow, bro. That's crazy. That's How are you spending your money? Like, what are, you are you telling your money where to go? Or are you wondering where it went? That's like a real thing in the NFL. Offensive to linemen, they took them out to eat, and of course they ordered all the appetizers, all the steaks they can get. They do not want to go to Applebee's. They want to go to the best steak place that they can find. That was an expensive bill too. It's something you want to do, take care of your linemen, you block for you, take care of you, keep you off the dirt, you know. I'll do it again if I have to. So I to Corey. I have like a whole bunch of like murals and like motivational things. I got a weight room. I have like five, six different paintings. Muhammad Ali, Michael Jordan, Michael Jackson. I got a Kobe mural. I got a whole like poker table of like my favorite rappers with a uh, Scarface. It's like Jay-Z, Nipsey, J. Cole, Biggie, Tupac. It's a dope piece. It didn't charge me that much. So I'll probably say another 10 for Corey to paint my basement. Being in the NFL, of course, you have family members that you want to look after, a couple friends that you grew up with. The biggest thing I learned is how to say no, because people will ask for a lot if you let them. We took care of my sister, I helped her go to school, you know, stuff like that, something that I feel like was important for somebody to move forward with their life, I'll help them with. She got a scholarship to SCAD, Savannah College in Art Design. She is a actress, and uh, she's majoring in communications. She wants to produce movies, make movies, be in movies. My dad always says she's more talented than me at what she does than what I do, but that's up for debate. I need 50. Degree money, sir. Go to my sister. Can you really criticize that one? You can't really criticize it. You can't really criticize that one. That one's, that one's chill, man. It's chill. But you see, like, this is just this is just the first million, right? You see how lifestyles improve, right? And then costs increase. So when you become the, the family breadwinner, or whatever it is, right? You not only have to think about yourself, but you also have to think about, okay, how am I going to think of my parents and all these other expenses that gradually occur, right? This is like Parkinson's law in effect, which in the context of money states that our expenditures typically rise to meet our new level of income. So in order to combat Parkinson's law, you need to be saving, right? Saving isn't just about like saving, right? But it's about saving a certain percentage, let's say 30% or 40%, whatever you can afford to do, directly into your savings accounts. Or if you're comfortable with the amount of money you have in your savings account, putting that 30 or 20% in, in an investment account that could ultimately make you more money down the line. But let's say you are self-employed, you're making $10,000 per month, right? After taxes, you probably be left with maybe 7,000. Then right away, you wanna put 20% of that money directly into your savings account. And already you are living below your means because instead of the 7,000, you're now operating under 5,000, right? So this is how you are able to combat that new uh, higher income. <laughs> If you have a waving in New York, do you get taxed from the state yeah. of New York? I try to tell you, taxes are no joke, bro. So you'll get taxed where you play. You'll get taxed when you play at your home stadium. So if you play in LA, you're getting LA taxes. If you're playing in New York, you're getting New York taxes. For that game that you're playing, it's ridiculous, but <laughs> yeah, it is what it is. Let's push all this money in for taxes. Ouch, that hurts. Yeah, this is all taxes. <laughs> in my first million. I feel pretty good. Something I always dreamed of as a kid, and car and watch and my mama house and stuff. But it goes pretty fast. You think you got everything in the world once you get drafted and then you look at your check and like, it's a lot of money, but it can go. So uh, by the looks of it, he may not be getting out of contract or an official contract by the same team, right? He might still get a decent amount of money, maybe a million dollars at the, at, the, at the most, but at the least, uh, given his next NFL team. But as of right now, it does not look promising. And this is why you can't necessarily expect athletes to be good with their money they didn't run a business and then have to keep track of their accounting they played a sport and then they were given money it's not like that sport essentially made them that money physically right playing the sport was a byproduct of them making money that's why most for the most part most business owners or entrepreneurs know how to make that money back again or know how to recoup a certain loss right but an athlete once you are no longer have favor with the team or you're no longer good if you have injuries or if you age it's hard for you to make that money back unless you properly manage you know what i'm saying like even your own personal life how are you managing your own money so this is the world of of athletes right it's not all sunshine and roses if you want to know about the world of an actor and why actors go broke in their own different way watch my past video the untold truth about why actors go broke featuring will smith Lindsay lohan 
at Nicolas Cage. Or if you are struggling with some type of addiction, you want to finally quit your marijuana addiction, you find yourself spending too much money on marijuana, like substances can be very expensive, check out my marijuana video right here. As always, it doesn't feed you, don't water it, and too much of any good thing is good for nothing. How you look doing today? I'm doing more, saying less, and keeping that same energy. No cap. Flip the script. I'm out. I had to get it, can't compare it to my ex, no car, but my nigga daddy Stuck in quarantine, getting money through the cash app You niggas be capping, complaining